When the, the story broke, like I had already told the people in my life that were important to me that I was gay. Like I came out to my producer first because I wanted him to know the subject matter of the record and that they weren't just good catchy songs but that they kind of had this message and they were about my identity and figuring it out. And so that was powerful and he, he really gave me a lot of support. And so it made me courageous to tell my family right away and my friends and my band. And so I'd kind of gotten the really important people uh, out of the way, I guess is what you say. But, but uh, I was interested just to see like what conservative family friends would say and people that were kind of still in my life, but not totally. And everyone's just outpour of like support and love was really supportive and, and cool because, you know, growing up in the 90s, I didn't always see it in, people embrace gay celebrities that came out or, or gay people at my school. And so there was sort of this taboo nature to coming out in my experience uh, as a teenager. And so it gave me a level of fear. Like I remember when Ellen DeGeneres came out and that was such a huge deal. And now looking at it when celebrities come out or when sports figures come out, it's mentioned and it's maybe a headline for a day, but then people move on. And I think that I especially think Ellen like paved the way for that because she's, I, I think I actually watched all her interviews like right as I was making my announcement or whatever and it was powerful to see like the strides that the, that the gay community and gay culture has made in, in pop culture and in society. It's cool. You know, I love that I have music to get me through things and that, and I know that sounds cliche but it's true. and. Um, and then also like coming out, I, <clears throat> I did have relationships with women that I really enjoyed, but I always, and a, a boy or girl, I think what always came down to music was actually my first crush and I always owed more to music than I did to maybe a boy or a girl. Like, so for me, coming out and being honest to this album and like the songs that we wrote for it, like I, I felt like I owed that to this, this body of work because I didn't want to have to go through another cycle of interviews promoting a record where I was kind of glazing over themes that I thought were probably pretty important and that people could really relate to, you know? And so um, music's like, you know, my number one crush, I guess. I, I don't think anyone's written a song called Text Me in the Morning and I like that, that that concept hadn't totally been written about yet, but like, I know like Britney Spears back in the 90s had like email my heart. So people, <laughs> there are pop songs there that are like embracing technology. But yeah, I don't know if, I think love is timeless and writing about love, obviously it never gets too old because we still hear love songs every year and there's new ones that impact us. But I think it is important. Um, I know like television and I like seeing in like movies, they're, taking on that so it's not just it's not just the standard uh, romance I, f I feel like it's it's timely and important I loved the show looking on HBO based solely on the fact that like I could identify with that because it took the conundrum of being a gay man trying to find love but it also did it in a way that incorporated modern technology because really I Looking is kind of a phrase we use when you're saying you're looking for someone online. And um, for me, like I've been in that situation where I've had to use an app to find someone to hang out with. That's weird. It's kind of like going to a store and buying a human. It's almost prostitution in a scary way uh, without the money exchange. So, well, I don't know necessarily if I was saying in that quote that I'm the chosen one as the gay pop star. Um, because of course Adam Lambert came out a few years ago and and he had uh, he's had a great career and you know and I I think he's great um, so I wasn't trying to leave out obviously a lot of gay celebrities but I think there's still a degree of like like I remember when he kissed a guy at the AMAs and and then Good Morning America canceled his his interview the next day and that maybe, you know, that was a sign that, okay, the world's not totally ready for that. And it makes me sad, because it's like, okay, so we have Macklemore, who's, you know, a straight white guy, like rapping and making it, making it safe to listen to, I guess. And I really appreciate his statements, but at the same time, I wonder, could Mary Lambert, the 
girl who sings on the same love track as a lesbian be a star alone without Macklemore and I don't know, you know, and I think the hook of that song definitely is that chorus that she wrote. So for me it's kind of just analyzing like, is the world ready to embrace and not worry about the sexuality and then can we just get back to like listening to songs that are great and not worry about it and I don't know. There's obviously been great gay icons throughout the years that have, have great careers, um, Elton John, Boy George, um, but I, I don't know, I, I think there always has to be like a little sour with the sweet still and I wish, I wish we could just move past that. I don't know if I'm the guy, I'm not claiming to be, but.